uh, GKM Derek Asida Mamadou, are master students in the joint program TESOL and Linguistics at Ball State University. Well, given my upbringing in a multilingual setting and my major, I have often been approached by people who are interested in knowing the difficulties one might encounter while learning, let's say, one language versus the other. So oftentimes, people will ask me questions such as, how difficult was it for you to learn English or versus French or versus Dula or versus, you know, the other languages you speak? And most of the time, I have had a pretty hard time answering these questions. Now, without proper investigation or research, it is quite easy to jump to hasty conclusions. So what I'm trying to provide you with here is a mini contrastive analysis between two of the languages I speak. Dula and English, and hopefully at the end of this mini contrastive analysis, we'll be able to make predictions about the difficulties a speaker of either one of the languages uh, might encounter while learning the other. So if you're really interested in knowing the linguistic truth behind this question, please keep watching. Um, well, questions of dialectal differences might always arise from these kinds of studies because we're all aware of the fact that you know English has many dialects and in this particular study I'm interested in looking at the English spoken in the United States without taking into consideration the dialectal differences so I wouldn't worry about the type of English spoken in the South the type of English spoken you know in the Midwest versus you know other places in the United States and the same way, I'll be looking at the Jula spoken in Bobo Jula, so Burkina Faso. So I wouldn't take into account the Jula you know, spoken in uh, certain areas in Mali, in which instances is even not called Jula, but Bambara. Or the Jula spoken in Guinea, in which instance, again, it is not called Jula, but Maninka. So the dialectal differences would not be taken into consideration in the study. Now, the next logical step would be to look at the types of sounds that exist in both languages. So the sounds that exist in Jula and the sounds that exist in English. Sounds are divided into two categories, which are vowels and consonants. And here I present you with the IPA consonant chart displaying the consonants human beings can possibly produce. These consonants are classified in terms of their manner and place of articulation. In what will follow, I will present you with the consonants present in the Jula language and the consonants present in the English language. Therefore, here are the Jula consonants. I will present these consonants through representative words that contain uh, the consonants in question. So I will start from the first row down from the left to the right. In terms of the words that are representative of these consonants in Dula, we would have pa meaning jump, ta meaning kek, cha meaning much, kala meaning stick, baradan meaning knitting, basa meaning a type of lizard, da meaning so, ja meaning trap, gama meaning shoulder, ba meaning okra, fadi meaning clothes, sin sin meaning basket, shishi meaning smoke, hakili meaning memory, malo meaning rice, nuwo meaning nostrils, nya meaning eyes, ngo meaning I'm saying, lase meaning communicate, bara meaning labor, wo meaning whole, yiri meaning three. Now, let's move on to the consonants that are present in the English language through representative words. Ambeni pen, ale dagaye, bird, ale kononye, truth, ale chinyaye, drum, ale dunduye, car, ale mobliye, garbage, ale nyamanyamaye, chip, ale songodimaye, job, ale baraye, fat, Ale turulamae, vanity, ale yermayrayae, thin, ale fasanie, this, ale nie, set, ale sigie, zoo, 
ale kongo soko bere, ship ale kurunye, genre ale fasugye, hat ale fukulanye, meat ale sogoye, nose ale nuye, being ale balofanye, lemon ale lemurukumye, wall ale kokoye, rat ale nyinaye, yam ale kuye. From there, let's look at the consonant sounds that are present in English but missing in Jula and the consonant sounds that are present in Jula but missing in English. Maybe learners would have difficulties with these missing sounds. The Jula language is missing the interdental th and the in words like then and then. Because of the absence of these word sounds in Jula, we can predict that Jula speakers will have difficulties with these sounds. Jula speakers will certainly replace them by the closer sounds which are th and v. Words like thin and then will be pronounced by Jula speakers as thin and then. It is also worth mentioning that the English R is quite different from the Jula R. The Jula R, which is a flap, is almost similar to the Spanish R, and you can notice it in a word like bara. The Jula sounds that are missing in English are the b and b. Two stops released as one sound. Because of the absence of these consonant sounds in English, we can predict that English speakers will have a hard time producing them. They will respectively replace them by k and g. Even though the ny sound is present in few English words like canyon and vignette, this sound is very prominent in the Jula language and we can predict that English speakers might have difficulties with them. One key information that is worth rectifying here is that I am not making the claim that speakers of either language will not be able to produce the sounds in questions, the missing sounds. I am simply making the claim that they will have difficulties with them simply because that does not exist in their native language. Now what they will do, in their attempt to produce these sounds, if they fail to do so, they might shoot for neighboring sounds. One element that could complicate things for English speakers simply represent free variations in Jula. Even though we do not have many instances of free variation in English, we do have a lot of them. A lot of them in Jula. For example, L and R uh, can be used interchangeably without affecting the meaning of a word. So if I have a word like bolo, which means arm, and boro, which means arm, it's the same thing. So if you have a word like tle, which is the sun, and tere, it's the same thing. So I wonder how an English speaker might cope with these three variations because we have a lot of them, a lot of them. In acquiring a second language, we know for a fact that consonant sounds do not usually cause the most problems. Vowel sounds do. What we'll do next is take a look at the vowel sounds that exist in English and the vowel sounds that exist in Jula and see if they're similar or the kinds of accommodations learners might engage in while trying to reproduce these vowels. Here I present you with the IPA vowel chart displaying all the vowels human beings can possibly produce. In what will follow, I will present you with the vowels that exist in the Jula language. And as you can see, uh, I have cycled them in blue. So we have uh, the vowel E, A, E, A, U, O, and O. Now in comparison to the vowels that exist, in English, I've cycled them in red. So English also has all these vowels with the exception of the R that I've cycled in blue. So that R might be the vowel that would cause problem to English speakers. Now here again I present you with the vowels, all the vowels that exist in the English language. And as you can see, English has far more vowels than Jula. In what will follow, I'll present you with all the missing vowels uh, that exist in English uh, but are, are missing in Jula. So those are the ones I have cycled in uh, red and in blue and as you can see there are quite many of them. Now in terms of prediction what we can predict here is that 
Dual speakers will engage in the following thing. So, so what they will do is a shoot for approximations. So the arrows I have here indicate the kind of movements uh, Jula speakers will engage in as far as reaching or replacing uh, the vowels that don't exist by uh, similar vowels. Given these repartitions of vowels between Jula and English, one would be tempted at this point to make the claim that it is more difficult for a Jula speaker to learn English than it is for an English speaker to learn Jula. But we should not jump to this conclusion as of now because one of the things that is still worth taking into consideration is that even though vowel length does not make a difference in English, it does in Dula. For instance, if you have a word like bara, which means a continent, and bara, which means work, these two words are minimal pairs in Dula. So all the vowels I have provided you with earlier, once you modify the length, this could have serious repercussion of the meaning of a word and because of that vowel length does make a difference in Jula. Now that we're done looking at the two languages at the sound level meaning comparing and contrasting the consonants and the vowels we can certainly move to the syllable level so look at the kinds of syllable structures that exist in both languages. We do know for a fact that the English syllable structure uh, can allow clusters at the onset as well as the coda position. However, the syllable structure in uh, standard Jula is simply vowel or consonant vowel. Therefore, uh, standard Jula does not allow clusters. However, I cannot possibly speculate on the reason for this. But recently, we have seen some changes among some speakers of Jula's, especially in uh, the urban areas. We see more and more Jula speakers engaging in a syncope type of phenomenon, uh, deleting some vowels and therefore forming consonant clusters. Given this syllable structure in Jula, we can in fact predict that speakers who do engage in the syncope type of phenomenon would have less of a problem than speakers who speak the standard Jula. And as a matter of fact, what they would do is insert vowels to break up the English consonant clusters whenever they are faced with English words that contain these clusters. To give you an example, a friend of mine would say berege for burger, simply because you know he has to break up the consonant cluster. Beyond the syllable structure, uh, the next thing we can certainly do is uh, look at uh, what happens at the word level. And in regard to that, I would like to discuss the notions of stress and the notions of tone. In regard to the difficulties at the word level, English speakers might face the problem of tone. Jula is a tonal language. And what this means is that depending on the intonation you put on certain syllables in the word, this can potentially change the meaning of that word. To give you a few examples, we can have a word like tien, which means something that belongs to you, and tien, which means the truth. So I repeat again, tien, something that belongs to you, and tien, which is the truth. To wrap this discussion up, I still have to admit that I do not have an answer to my question. Is it more difficult for an English speaker to learn Jula or is it more difficult for a Jula speaker to learn English? You would also have to decide on whether it is easier to learn a language that has complete different vowels than your first language or whether it is more difficult to learn a language that has similar vowels but a language in which vowel length does make a difference.